Today we have another Impact Wrench Teardown Review. This time it's the Chicago Pneumatic CP7732 one half inch drive compact impact wrench. Now today is going to be a little bit different. We are going to tear this apart and see how well it's made, but we're also going to see why it broke. I actually bought two of these. Neither one is working right. On this one the drive is just seized in place. On the other one the drive spins but when you plug it into air it doesn't work right. So let's get inside of these and see how well it's made and what's wrong. Before we tear into this, let's take a quick look at the cosmetic build quality. This is all cast, either aluminum or magnesium on this impact. Uh, same with the rear cover plate here. Uh, this piece on the front is machined steel. I checked it with a magnet. This is a decently complex casting. You have a lot of little details here, like the area that's threaded for the screws. You have some air channels here. Uh, and on everything, it looks like it's well formed. And overall, they did a good job. Here's a quick comparison to show you how little this really is. Here we have the Earthquake XT impact. This is an Ingersoll Rand 2100G. This is a Husky uh, H4455. And boy, when you compare them side by side, uh, this compact impact really is small. Let's really start getting into the insides of this. Take out these four screws on the rear cover plate. I have all the screws out, so now we can remove the rear cover plate here. One thing I see already that I don't love is this uh, paper gasket here for the rear cover plate. You know, uh, rubber or plastic type material would be better for this, so if you ever were to open it up, it would be less likely to tear and more likely you could reuse it. So if you open this up and the gasket rips, you'll either have to order a new one or cut your own out of gasket paper. Looking at the rear cover plate itself, uh, well done here. You can see some overspray from the painting, um, some general filth in here, uh, but everything on this is well cast and well done. Here's the back of the air motor. We should just be able to tip this out. Oh, whoa, <laughs> well. There we have it. Uh, I'm going to say that is our problem with this. The front of the rotor is sheared off. Let me see if I can get the other piece out of there. There we have the cylinder for the air motor. There's still some pieces hanging on here. It took some persuasion, but it's out and it's not pretty. Let me just dump some additional shards out. Of, oh, there's just a bunch of little metal shards in here. Here's the air motor for this impact. You can see the two end plates here. Here's the rotor. Uh, the broken shaft is what would have gone into the backside of the hammer mechanism. Here are the uh, remaining pieces of that splined shaft. You can see that thing let go pretty well. Here in the middle are the two end plates for the air motor. Uh, just for comparison, here's one of the end plates from the Chicago Pneumatic CP734H. This is one of the end plates from the Earthquake XT. One thing that's different about these on the uh, Chicago Pneumatic Compact is they're made of steel. Uh, these are both aluminum, as are most of the ones I've looked at in other impact wrenches. I'm assuming that's to help prevent wear. You can see they have some wear here. Um, it's not as bad in person as it might look in the photos. If you run your fingers across it, that's still pretty smooth. One thing I notice: these bearings are shot. They are both very rough. Uh, and I do not see any brand or country of origin markings on either one. This littler one has the marking R6, which I think is the size, but I don't see anything here on the bigger one. The cylinder for the air motor looks good. All the machine work on the ends here is good. Uh, it's just plain raw steel. I've seen some that are finished in uh, like a blue or oxide type finish. This one's raw steel, but uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, other than the fact that it wasn't working, uh, this looks good. 
Here's the rotor from the uh, Chicago pneumatic impact, and here's one of the air motor vanes. Uh, you can see this is a phenolic resin material. It's just punched out of a sheet of phenolic resin, I believe. This is a pretty common material to find for air motor vanes. Um, but it's interesting that they use it here because this is an air motor vein out of my other Chicago pneumatic impact, the CP734H, which is made in Japan. Uh, this compact impact is made in Taiwan. And it's interesting to note that they use a plastic material material and the other one I have, uh, but the phenolic resin in this one, which is a pretty common material choice from what I've seen. Looking at the impacting mechanism from the Chicago pneumatic, you can see it's based on the classic uh, twin hammer design that you see in all kinds of different brands of impacts, except that it's tiny and it only has one hammer. Uh, just for size comparison, here's the hammering mechanism out of the Harbor Freight Earthquake XT, which is the same type of design but with two hammers and obviously much larger. Now a quick look at the anvils out of three impacts. This tiny one is obviously from the Chicago pneumatic. This is from the Harbor Freight Earthquake XT. This is from my other Chicago pneumatic, the CP734H. I would say the machining on this uh, is about on par with the Earthquake XT, which is not bad. The Earthquake has good machine work. It looks like on the anvil, so does the Chicago pneumatic. However, this made in Japan Chicago pneumatic is a little bit better. The finish, uh, the quality of the work just looks a little bit nicer on this. The CP734H just has fantastic build quality. You know, I'm a little bit curious about the failure of the shaft on this rotor. If you remember, I have another one of these impacts that's also not working but kind of has different symptoms. I'm going to open that one up too and see what's going on in there. Here we have impact number one. This is the one you all saw me take apart. Here's the second one that I just took apart. And what are the odds? It has the exact same problem. The front of the rotor shaft is sheared off. You know, I'd like to hear the opinions of some of you watching this video because I'm not sure exactly what to think about this. If these shafts weren't broken, I'd be saying that the overall build quality on these is good, but it's not the best I've seen. Uh, for example, I can't find any brand name markings on the bearings, which is not very encouraging. I can only find the size markings. I mean, the machine work is good, but they did kind of cheap out and just use a paper gasket here on the end plate. I did compare the shafts on these compact impacts to the shaft on my full-size Chicago pneumatic CP734H. They're both a half inch in diameter and they have the same number of splines, uh, but the splined portion is significantly longer on the 734H. Uh, does that play a part in this? I mean, is that just the nature of the beast when you're dealing with a compact impact wrench? You just don't have as much space to fit in things like a longer splined shaft? I did some Googling and I didn't find other reports of these types of failures on these impacts so maybe these are just a fluke or they were you know thoroughly used and abused and just worn out which caused this to happen uh, either way it looks to me like this is probably the failure mode for these impacts uh, this is just the weakest link perhaps what do you think am I right about that am I wrong about that was this a weak link or is just this just a failure caused by worn out old impact wrenches so post up your opinion on this I'd like to hear it and thanks for watching.